वेलकम टू द चैनल लर्न विद डैनिश सब्सक्राइब एंड हिट द बेल आइकन हेलो ऑल वेलकम टू द सेकंड पार्ट ऑफ द वीडियो ऊरुभंगा भाई बासा लेट्स जस्ट चेक व्हाट वी डिस्कस्ड इन द फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ द वीडियो राइट सो इन द फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ द वीडियो वी डिस्कस्ड द सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ द राइटर भाषा इन संस्कृत लिटरेचर वी टॉक्ड अबाउट हाउ ही वाज एन great he was a great influence uh, uh, to writers like kalidasa and how kalidasa mentions his name in his first dramatic work malaviga agni mitram so uh, that is the significance of bhasa we discussed then we had a small introduction to bhasa and his style of writing we see we see that uh, bhasa had a kind of signatory creativity wherein he actually brings in a different approach to characterization which is quite unconventional as such during the time then we have uh, we have also discussed uh, nadaka chakram of bhasa the 13th place that uh, bhasa has written uh, which is derived from uh, plots of mahabharata ramayana brahat katha loka katha and srimad bhagavatam and uh, we discussed uh, we we saw that uh, he he has around the sixth place Uh, from the uh, plot of mahabharata as such where where in urubhanga the play that we are going to discuss today is also from mahabharata then we had a brief introduction to the text urubhangam that is uh, the text that we are going to study and uh, we also saw how the play is different from mahabharata he doesn't actually copy the entire script of mahabharata he doesn't produce the entire script of uh, of mahabharata as such but he keeps on making certain changes around five changes we talked about it in the first video kindly watch the first video for all these information so let's get into uh, the slide as such as you know the um, urubhanga is uh, the uh, is based on the duel that was fought between bhim and duryodhana and that duel was basically a mace fight and we see that uh, uh, it is considered to be the uh, last duel in mahabharata uh, wherein uh, all the pandavas were left and all the kauravas were dead except that of duryodhana except duryodhana then after the fight basically the uh, the actual scene comes when uh, when the fight is over uh, because till the fight uh, till the fight uh, we have the introduction scene as such and uh, after the fight is over we have uh, different visitors uh, paying homage of uh, kind of uh, visiting uh, the fallen duryodhana who was actually fallen who has actually fallen uh, due to deceit um bhim actually plays a kind of fall game in the duel and uh, it is through this foul play that uh, duryodhana is trashed in his thighs so let us uh, look into the text uh, urubhanga it is also titled it is also literally translated as the breaking of the thighs it can also be titled as uh, the shattered thigh right it depends on different versions i said i have taken from devdar translation and uh, the play begins uh, with an induction scene actually in sanskrit uh, play uh, uh, of course uh, this is not a natakam it is a rupakam it doesn't have a fixed kind of dramaturgy structure as such so in this play we see that uh, it begins with an induction scene with the appearance of the stage director and stage assistant so just like in greek drama we have the chorus who actually comes up on the stage and says about the scene as such not similarly to chorus but uh, basically the stage director actually comes up with uh, the uh, plot a general introduction to the plot there is no detailed introduction as a general introduction where uh, they comment that uh, uh, it introduces to the action of the play general introduction setting the background only uh, duryodhana and the pandavas are left we come to know that uh, th- these are the characters that are that are going to be present in the play as such even in the background right so after the induction we have uh, three soldiers from the kuru clan kuru clan means uh, the opposite uh, uh, the kaurava 
uh, uh, clan uh, who enter we we they title as as uh, they, they, there's no there's no particular name given to these three soldiers it is often stated as first soldier second soldier and third soldier right and uh, this scene acts as the introduction scene and uh, introduction scene in sanskrit literature is often called as i i hope that i get my pronunciation correct uh, vishkambaga vishkambaga is uh, the introductory scene and in this introductory scene there is a detailed description of the background and setting of the play uh, the duel scene that is the, the fight between duryodhana and bhim actually happens at the end of this introduction scene and that that fight is also being described how bhim cheats on duryodhana how bhim cheats on duryodhana is specifically uh, described by the soldiers uh, through their sight uh, through what they see in this introduction scene and uh, they also use different imagery we'll we'll get into that in detail uh, describing the battlefield as such describing the warfare activities as such okay so vishkambaga ends when uh, balram enters the stage uh, where balram is really furious on uh, the beams actions and uh, then the play proceeds to uh, welcoming different characters slowly slowly uh, each character enters after balram we have uh, the family of duryodhana entering the place uh, the stage then we have ashwatthama entering the play stage and it goes like that and it ends after that right after uh, duryodhana dies as i said earlier in the earlier video it is an unconventional uh, drama wherein death is also portrayed the last part of this particular play portrays the death of uh, or stages the death of duryodhana so in vishka vishkambaga the first soldier let's get to the introduction scene so as i told earlier the induction scene we don't have much uh interactions going on uh, it is the interaction between the stage director and stage assistant but in vishkambaga the first soldier describes the battlefield using different imagery it's not the first soldier but all the other soldiers do uh, describe uh, the battlefield with different imagery it starts off with glorifying the battlefield or glorifying war as such what are the description that is used Uh, along with certain negative description house of hostility it is it is a, it is a, it is considered to be the house of hostility these are words that is being used inside the text or phrases that has been in, used inside the text a touchstone a touchstone of valor where bravery is actually pictured valor means bravery a home of pride and honor right fighting a war is considered to be uh a proud movement or a honorable movement for a soldier right and uh, it is a ball where nymphs of heaven assemble to choose their bridegrooms so these are the comments that is made by the soldiers uh, describing the war battlefield right samant panchaka is the battlefield here and uh, the soldiers are describing the battlefield it is a hall where nymphs of heaven right hurin hurlin as is call it in the semitic belief system um then we have it is the resting place for men's gallantry men's gallantry means men's bravery right brave men actually uh, are uh, resting in these war fields a hero's conch where king lies in their hour of death right there are kings who are lying dead and a passage to heaven last but not the least it's a passage to heaven so someone dies in the battlefield it is considered to be his passage to heaven right so these are some of the positive imageries even though i had included the first imagery is considered to be somewhat negative but still all the positive imageries that is put forth by the first soldier start of the play right then the soldiers also describe the state of destruction of the battlefield in vivid detail now what are the statements what are the phrases that the soldiers use in order to describe the destruction 
destructive elements destructive elements or what you say the the brutal elements in the battlefield the first one is we see a lot of carcasses of big elephants as you know uh during uh, the uh, mahabharata and all uh, the uh, the the war we see that uh, they use elephants especially in the indian subcontinent uh, war is fought by elephants then we have earth is uneven with boulder rocks boulder rocks simplifying that uh, uh it is it is filled with uh, big big iron uh, boulder rocks right vultures building nests so we see that there are lots of birds of prey in the battlefield birds of prey that actually pluck the ornaments yeah it comes like that birds be wetted with flesh trying to remove the ornaments of the fallen right wetted birds be wetted with flesh this is the exact word that has been used in the translated version right wetted with flesh trying to remove the ornaments of the fallen so we see that uh, all the kings the noble men they are the noble men who actually fall in the battlefield and uh, they 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 have uh, lots of ornaments they have bracelets they have uh, rings they have what you say necklaces right and uh, uh, we see that these birds vultures birds of prey actually plucking these ornaments right and while they pluck they have this blood also coming out or flesh also coming out <coughs> right jackals jackals are dragging down the dead just like we have the uh, <coughs> just like uh, in the marriage ceremony when when the brother sister in law or the brother in law actually uh, drags the um, the bride or uh, from the uh, groom from the stage jackals are dragging down the dead and uh, we have rivers of blood nearby there is a river and there is a rivers of blood and uh, chariots running devoid of kings and charioteers so chariots are running devoid of kings there is no person to control these chariots and it is it is all destructive these are all uh, around 6 to 7 points of destruction uh, which which actually describe the destructive element of the battlefield as such now let's just move on to the next slide uh, so on the whole uh, it is a very troubled and fearsome sight in samanta panchaka right it is a very fearful and s- very uneasy uneasy looking sight in that battlefield and uh, the whole thing is filled with bloods of horses elephants and men slain these are all words that has been used inside this text it is filled with blood of horses elephants and men slain and it is littered with armors so the 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 expression that the soldiers use is not a positive expression littered littered means why do you throw waste right it is just like littered it is it is seen dirty with armors shields umbrellas shawaris javelins arrows spears etc right so all these bloody or uh, elements are seen in the battlefield right where uh, bloody uh, equipments right which actually take off life the battlefield is like sacrificial ground there is also a kind of uh, mythical element that is put forth by the soldier wherein he actually compares uh, the battlefield as a sacrificial ground sacrificial ground where elephant tusks you see that elephants are huge in number in indian battlefields elephant tusks are sacrificial post right they are sacrificial post and arrows are like grasses in the field so just imagine an aerial shot an aerial helicam shot of a battlefield we see that there are lots of uh, people fallen and in these people we have arrows spears struck and when we look at uh, the uh, the panoramic vision of the battlefield from an aerial point of view we see that it's just like grasses that is sprouting out from the land right so arrows are like grasses on the field men like the victimized sacrificial animal 
lying helpless before beasts of prey so men are men are the person or the soldiers or the kings or the noblemen who have fallen are actually the victimized the sacrificial animal and uh, they are helpless they are lying helpless with within the beast of prey as such so futility of war is um, also seen in the dialogues of uh, the soldiers in the description of the soldiers where in the so- where in one soldier says how decorated elephants are fallen looking like a royal arsenal so decorated uh, uh, elephants which is which is uh, well trained for warfare activities are also fallen so that is the futility of war that is being pointed out by uh, the soldier through his description of the battlefield there so uh, then we come to the duel between uh, bhima and duryodhana uh, but before the duel starts we see that uh, there is a cloud uh, rumbling effect there is there is a kind of a huge thunderstorm coming in uh, thunderstorm is often associated with uh, with uh, with a kind of higher intensity feeling wherein um, suggesting a kind of intensity of action that is uh, that is um, that is higher in degree compared to the other actions so the main action is based on the fight between bhima and duryodhana the rest of the action happens actually or the rest of the action take place in the play due to the duel of bhima and duryodhana so in before the uh, the duel starts we have this uh, kind of effect we give a kind of sound effect right so there is rumbling of uh, the mountains and rumbling sounds and mountain piercing sounds that is seen before the play begin now in uh, vishkambagam we have the description of the duel in detail so at the start we see that uh, bhim is vehemently attacked by duryodhana so duryodhana is uh, has uh, mastery over the skill of mace attack but uh, bhim is physically strong he doesn't know how to use there is no skill based training that was given to bhim but it was given to duryodhana so duryodhana had the upper hand during the first part of the duel and we see that blood was oozing out from bhim shoulders were broken forehead was cut and it was bleeding uh, so duryodhana is skilled and well trained but bhim is strong that is the only suggestion that we have from uh, the description of the soldier so at the start of the play duryodhana was enjoying his time because it was duryodhana who actually chose uh to fight a mace fight according to the mahabharata epic we see that uh, yudhishthira gives the choice to duryodhana uh, so that uh, he can choose what kind of warfare or duel uh, he needs and he chose to have a mace fight where which is uh, which he has mastered his skill in so basically that is the that is the essence we at first uh, we see that uh, bhim is drooping down and uh, vyasa is astounded so the person who has written mahabharata is astounded seeing that uh, bhim might win the game or uh, that uh, he whatever he has written in mahabharata might go wrong as such so uh, bhim is drooping at the start of the uh, this thing and uh, yudhishthira also feels uh, distressed uh, yudhishthira is uh, the eldest brother of the pandavas and vidura's eyes are filled with tears these are all spectators uh, who are actually watching this uh, duel so vyasa is confused how can that be uh, i have written not like that i have written i have uh, assumed that um, bhim is the one who is actually going to win so we see that duryodhana is in full of pride and dignity at the start and he says to bhim who is drooped over who is in a prostrate condition who is lying on the ground he says one particular dialogue and that particular dialogue is quite important throughout the play because when bhim falls uh, duryodhana tells him this o bhim no hero will strike one who is prostrate in battle no hero will strike no hero 
so he considers himself to be proud a proud soldier uh, a pride a proud uh, hero as such who considers himself duryodhana considers himself to be a pride hero and he says that no hero will strike one who is prostrate in the battle prostrate in the battle means one who is lying down in the battle so uh, the the opposite action takes place at the other end when bhim actually uh, thrashes uh, duryodhana's thighs right so bhim abuses bhim actually kicks his head off uh, uh, at the end uh, when uh, duryodhana is lying on the field but when bhim is lying on the field duryodhana comes up with this dialogue this indicates that uh, duryodhana is being glorified here right there is a grandeur that is given to the characterization there is a grandeur in nobility that is given to this particular person as such and it is then that uh, krishna makes a sign to bhim and uh, by striking his left thigh and it is soon after this that bhim falls and duryodhana takes pride and comes up with this dialogue we see that krishna is uh what you say giving the signal that is the first major change that is from epic mahabharata right the first major change wherein it is not arjuna who actually signals his left thigh but shri krishna right so uh in the uh it is then that uh, bhima takes his mace chitrangada and hurls in duryodhana's thighs it's against the convention of a mace duel so according to the rule of a mace duel we don't actually hit uh, someone's thighs rather we can hit on the shoulders we can hit on the uh, chest we can hit on the abdomen uh, above the abdominal part that is the rule of mace fight but uh, unfortunately when krishna says that uh, he could not win the war unless and until he does some kind of a foul play he signals the left thigh and ultimately bhim uh, is really happy when krishna signals it and he thrashes uh, duryodhana's thigh and ultimately duryodhana the kuru king falls and uh, vyasa is risen to the sky vyasa has attained his um, what you say scripture in the correct manner balrama is angered balram is considered to be shri krishna's brother the guru of duryodhana and vyasa asks the pandavas to take away bhim because balrama is actually infuriated with the action of bhim who happens to be a pandava and still he has uh, he has done a very uh, low uh, ordeal right krishna helps uh, bhim to go away and uh, the introductory scene the vishkambagam ends when uh, balrama is seen ferociously approaching uh, towards the battlefield and uh, he he is greatly angered with the actions of bhim and he is really sympathetic towards uh, uh, duryodhana with that uh, uh, vishkambagam actually comes into uh, comes into uh, an end as such so i think uh, we can stop this uh, second part of the video for the time being mm, i hope that you have understood the induction scene and the vishkambagam uh, kambaga scene of uh, this uh, particular play urbhanga by basa uh, if you have any doubts uh, please do uh, post your doubts in the uh, comment box below uh if you find this video to be useful please do like share and subscribe till then we'll come up with a third part of the video soon and uh, till then it's me danish signing off have a good day learn with danish thank you